Happy Sunday, children. Uh, hope everyone has had a good week. Uh, it's been a good Chinese New Year. Um, I hope you have collected a lot of ang during Chinese New Year and had fun uh, spending some time with our families. So children, today, the lesson that we're going to be talking about is a specific commandment out of the Ten Commandments. And maybe before we share the actual story today, we're going to share a little bit about uh, this king called Ahab. Um, children, I don't know if you remember this story, but um, you have learned about King Ahab and Queen Jezebel who broke a particular commandment. And what commandment is that? Well, let's hear the story first. Well, you know that King Ahab was a man who was very, very, very powerful and a man who was also very greedy. Now, one day he came across a vineyard that belonged to a man called Naboth. And when he saw the vineyard, he really wanted to have the vineyard. So he tried all his ways to convince Naboth to sell the vineyard to him. But Naboth was not, uh, was not willing to sell the vineyard. So Ahab was very upset and very, and very um, um, angry that he couldn't get the vineyard. So he and his wife, Queen Jezebel, decided to plot against Naboth. And they instigated two men to bear false witness against Naboth, claiming that Naboth did a crime. And what happened to him then? Naboth was actually stoned to death. By killing Naboth, it meant that uh, Ahab and Jezebel were able to take Naboth's vineyard as his own. So what commandments did these did Ahab actually break? Well, Ahab broke many commandments against God when he did this to Naboth. The first is, of course, you shall not murder. Although Ahab himself did not murder Naboth, he was the one who uh, resulted in Naboth being killed. So while he didn't do the actual deed, he caused somebody to die. The second one is, of course, stealing. So what he did to take Naboth's vineyard, was stealing. Um, and Naboth was more importantly not um, content with what he had. This story is something that uh, leads us to our ninth commandment that God is uh, teaching us today through today's story. The ninth commandment is you shall not covet. Now children, I want to ask, do you know what it means to covet? Well, Coveting means to want something else that is not yours. It means to be not content. To covet is to want something or to desire after something um, that you do not have right now. So God tells us to be content with whatever he chooses to give us. King Ahab was not content with what he had. He had envied Naboth and his vineyard. But he wasn't the only king who did so. So today's Bible story about coveting really talks about the Bible story of King Saul and David. Now, I'm sure children, you have heard uh, many stories about David, but I guess in this story, what is different is how uh, the Bible uses Saul's story to teach us about the commandment of coveting. Now, you imagine as a king, children, you would imagine that a king would have everything that he wants in life. Right, as a king, you are the most powerful person in the land. You have many servants at your disposal. You have an army at your disposal. You are rich and powerful. But yet, even all these things cannot stop a king from breaking the commandment of coveting because we are all sinful. Now, let's share the story about David and King Saul. Now, children, you know David was a shepherd initially and he took his care of his father's sheep in the hills and had taken some time to play, learn how to play a small harp. Now, David then knew how to make beautiful music. At this time, Saul was already the king of Israel, but he was often unhappy and troubled. And his servants went off to find someone who could play music that would help him feel better. They found David, and the young man was brought before the king to play the harp for him. Now, God's spirit was with David. So when the young music, shepherd musician played, the Lord helped him make the king calm down and feel better. And so it went each time David played his harp and the king's troubled feelings went away. 
At first, Saul liked David very much. He sent a message to David's father saying, let David stay with me and work with me because I am very pleased with him. So David went back and forth, um, back and forth from the king's court to his father's home in Bethlehem and his work there as a shepherd. Soon, however, um, they, Saul and those around him found a reason to pay attention to David for something else besides his music. They discovered that he was brave and strong and he had the faith and power, power of the living God. Now, when the army of Israel was afraid to fight Goliath, we know that David actually stepped forward and the tall, fierce warrior of Goliath had been making fun of Israel's army. But David knew it was wrong for Goliath to challenge God and his covenant people. So he gathered stones and went out to meet Goliath. And you children, you're all familiar with this story. But, you know, when Saul heard about David's victory, he was so pleased with him and gave him a... Uh, and brought David to live with him for good, giving him um, a high position in the army. And whatever Saul gave David to do, the godly young man did very well. Saul even um, let David become very good friends with Jonathan, uh, Saul's son. To the people of Israel, David was a wonderful hero. Um, the women came out to dance, play musical instruments, and sing. Saul has killed his thousands and David his ten thousands. Now, when Saul heard this, he became angry because his people were saying that he was lesser and not as good as David. He was so angry that he began to resent David and became jealous of him. The next day, Saul became very disturbed. When David started playing his harp to soothe the king, suddenly Saul uh, grabbed his spear and hurled it at David hoping to pin him to the wall. But David managed to escape unhurt. What happened to Saul? Instead of having love towards David, Saul had allowed envy to fill his heart. Saul now wanted to be popular, brave, and successful just like David. Saul began to covet what David had. And this is even though Saul was the most powerful man in the, in the kingdom. He was the king. But that could not stop Saul from breaking the commandment of coveting. After this, Saul sent David away from him and made him a commander in the army, hoping that David would die in battle. But the Lord was with David and protected David each step of the way, making David a great leader. So children, in this story, what we are seeing is that um, God is using Saul's jealousy and envy to show you that it doesn't matter how powerful or uh, good a king you might be, because of sin, you are still jealous and envious and are able to break the commandment about coveting. Now, we know that Saul sent David far away to, to war, um, but no matter how many times Saul sent David out, the, God was with David and protected him from Saul. God had chosen David to become the next king of Israel. And after Saul's death, eventually, um, David was crowned the king of the king by the tribe of Judah. It's hard, as true as story, we know that children, it's very hard not to cover what and to break the command. It's very hard not to break the commandment of coveting. As you see again, like, you know, even if you're the most powerful person with the most money, with the most servants and the most wealth, you can still feel not contented. Sometimes we are like Saul, you know, we're often jealous of someone else. I'm sure, children, you can think of an instance where you are, um, um, where you have been coveting, whether it's coveting a toy, maybe you are coveting something that somebody else um, bought, or maybe you just were coveting, you know, even things like people's looks. Somebody is prettier than me, someone is... Uh, smarter than me. There are many, many things that we can be envious about. But, and sometimes we can be like a heart that you saw, you know, being upset when we don't get what we want and we fall short of keeping the law. But children, we must turn to Jesus, our Savior, to forgive our sin and help us to have hearts that are content. I'd like you to remember, children, that God is in control of his, our lives. He knows exactly what we need and provides for us exactly as what he, can, he does. It's very important to learn uh, more so than not coveting. It's more important to learn the lesson of being content. Being content is about being thankful for all the things that you have in your life. 
knowing that God has given them to you and making full use of them. Now let us pray together, children. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, God, for today's lesson about coveting. We know that coveting is very difficult not to do because every day in the world, we are surrounded by many, many messages that tell us that what we have is not enough. We see advertisements about toys, about things, beautiful people. The world is telling us that there is so much more that we can get and so much more that we can have. But God, I pray that you will help us to see that you have given us enough and help us to see that you alone are enough. Help us to turn away from our sinful nature and instead focus on all the things that God, you have given us. We pray all this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Now, catechism questions by doing 71 to 75. Excuse me. Uh, first question, why do you need Christ as a king? The answer is because I am weak and helpless. Second question, how many commandments did God give on Mount Sinai? God gave 10 commandments, of which today you've learned the, about the ninth commandment. What are the 10 commandments sometimes called? They are sometimes called the Decalogue. Question 74. What do the first four commandments teach? The first commandments teach about our duty to God. And the last question, what do the last six commandments teach? They teach our duty to our fellow men. We've come to the end of today's lesson, children. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson and really take some time to think about all the things that you covered or you want in your life. Take some time to think about this and ask yourself, you know, practice the lesson of being content. How can I be content and grateful for what God has given me? I hope to see you soon, very soon. Happy Sunday.